Well, it turns out that the Ryzen AI 300 series and the Zen 5 on laptops is actually a lot better than we thought it was. Look, we were first exposed to Zen 5 laptops when we got this guy. This is the ZenBook S16. And altogether, it's a great device. There was almost no complaints about it. It did really good against the competition, and it did, at the time, show what the Ryzen AI 300 series could actually bring to the table. But at the time, we said its performance could have actually been a whole lot better. You see, its Ryzen AI 9 365 was running at a maximum of just 33 watts, while those chips technically top out at a lot more, 54 watts to be exact. And in a situation where power means absolutely everything for performance, there might have been a lot left in the tank. Not only that, but the ZenBook S16 was one of only a handful of laptops with these new AMD chips. And that situation, well, it's about to change. Anyways, AMD and Lenovo, they saw that situation, they saw our numbers, and they reached out and they said, look, now that more devices are coming out, we can do a lot better, a whole lot better. And I asked them to prove it. And that's exactly what they did. They ended up sending one of Lenovo's new Yoga Pro 7 Gen 9 laptops with the AI365 chip. And full transparency here, guys, they helped offset some of the costs involved with producing this video and us buying some additional devices for testing. Other than that, they told us to go for it. No strings attached. And that led us to some very, very interesting apples to apples comparisons because the Yoga Pro 7, it's actually been around for a couple of generations now. This is one is actually, I think, like, two years old. I mean, if a design works, why change it, right? And that's absolutely critical for this video, since with it, we're able to directly compare multiple generations of Ryzen laptop processors running at almost identical power levels in laptops with functionally the same chassis, cooling systems, battery capacity, you name it. More importantly, we were even able to buy an earlier Gen 8 model with the Ryzen 7 7840HS from overseas, since that model was never sold here in North America with integrated graphics. With this setup, our goal here is to see what kind of generational uplift Zen 5 actually provides. Of course, there's also the power factor that I talked about at the very beginning of this video, at least between the two laptops, the ZenBook and the Pro 7. And power is one of the most significant factors in laptop design. Period. While ASUS might have limited the AI365's top-end power, that was by design intent. They simply wanted to create a quiet, extremely thin laptop that still delivered good performance in everyday situations. So two things were sacrificed, power and noise. Meanwhile, Lenovo's design goal for the Pro 7 series has always leaned towards more demanding buyers. That means additional power and relatively low noise coupled with good temperatures. And all of that while still maintaining a slim profile. The end result is a laptop which can actually sustain power levels that in its highest power mode are above AMD's configurable TDP limit. But I know what you guys are thinking. Look, AMD has a set of specifications for the Ryzen AI 9 365 that they have on their website. Why in the world is Lenovo able to take the Pro 7 and run their laptop above AMD's stated specs? So let me explain. This is what Lenovo's power input looks like over a 10 minute all core workload. Basically, if a laptop's cooling, power delivery, voltages, and a bunch of other factors have enough overhead, the processor can opportunistically boost to just over 70 watts for a short period of time, after which it can hang around 60 watts for a while before eventually heading to AMD's sustainable power spec of 54 watts. The amount of time a laptop spends above 54 watts is determined by a term AMD calls STAPEM, or the Skin Temperature Aware Power Management Limits. So basically, if the laptop's surface gets too hot, power gets scaled back until it hits 54 watts. But with the Pro 7's cooling system, that didn't happen at any time during our 10-minute test. And the Yoga Pro 7 can do this largely because of Lenovo's X-Power design. Not only are there dual high-performance fans and an extensive heatsink array, but incoming air is funneled through critical areas by strategically placed foam air guides which optimize cooling. And the Ryzen AI 9 series seems to feed on this additional juice in a pretty big way, with the main CPU cores and 88M integrated GPU getting some huge uplifts when you compare both laptops in their highest performance modes. I mean, the 880M runs a whole 680 megahertz higher in this situation. But otherwise, you still get the same thing as with other Ryzen AI365 laptops, a 10-core, 20-thread CPU that's very, very efficient a GPU using the refreshed RDNA 3.5 architecture, an NPU rated at 40 tops, support for Copilot Plus, Wi-Fi 7, the list goes on. So the question here is pretty simple. Can the Ryzen AI9 365 end up 
beating the Ryzen 7000 series and Ryzen 8000 series when it's installed into the exact same chassis, or at least when all the CPUs are installed into the exact same chassis, given the same type of cooling, and every other factor is completely normalized, including the power. Not only that, did our initial review of the Ryzen AI9 365 sell it a little bit short? Let's kick things off with Cinebench. And of course, we're naturally gonna see huge progression for the Ryzen AI9 365, since it has 20 processing threads, whereas previous generations had 16. And yet we can still see what happens when that same CPU is wattage constrained. Despite more threads, it can barely keep up with the 7000 series. And this is exactly why testing laptop processors needs to be done with similar devices that have matching power levels. If not, you'll get apples to oranges comparisons all over the place and come to a completely incorrect conclusion about what a CPU or GPU for that matter is truly capable of. And yet if you move into single threaded performance, which isn't power constrained, the Ryzen AI9 365 performs the same regardless of how much it's being fed. But this also highlights one of the major focuses for Zen 5 on laptops. AMD wanted to increase responsiveness in apps that thin and light laptops were most used for. And a lot of those are lightly threaded. That directly affects applications that a lot of people tend to use every day, like an office suite. Here, the new Ryzen CPUs really feel a lot, I guess you would call it snappier than previous generations. I should also mention these benchmarks try to recreate a real world usage scenario. So some rely on the internal SSD more than others to save excessively large files. So they aren't completely CPU dependent in every case. Meanwhile, in more creative focused apps that combine multi and lightly threaded workloads, the additional power Lenovo gives to the Yoga Pro 7 really benefits the Ryzen AI9 365. Though even without that extra juice, Zen 5 is still miles ahead of the previous generations. Lightroom also falls into that same category, which proves that AMD made good progress with their new architecture, regardless of how much power you give it. This also goes to prove that not all programs need a ton of multi-core muscle. And yet in a direct comparison at around 58 watts, the Yoga Pro 7's Ryzen AI9 365 really shows the benefits of these new Zen CPUs. I also don't want to completely overlook what's being achieved on the more efficient side either, because the AI9 365 can almost match the 7840HS in all core workloads, even when running at just over half the wattage. And when the GPU gets involved in processing, well, it's still a clear advantage in both performance per watt and overall output when the system has enough power overhead, which is something that's so critical for a program like Resolve, since it uses both the CPU and GPU cores when rendering out a project. So in these cases, feeding the entire SOC with more current grants a much higher rate of return than even in strictly processor related tasks. The same goes for Premiere, but its output is more GPU focused and that's where the 880M can really shine. So both Zen 5 laptops get a huge advantage over previous generations, regardless of the wattage they're running at. Another thing people were looking for when it came to Strix Point and Zen 5 on laptops was significantly better gaming performance. And look, we, we, we can't expect miracles here. These are thin and light devices. They are ultra portables. They are not meant to be gaming first laptops. On the other hand, AMD's RDNA 3.5 GPU architecture that they're using here does have the, the foundation to give you some really amazing results in a small chassis like this. The only thing is that it absolutely needs power to shine. Let's start with synthetics that combine CPU and GPU loads, and those point towards the new Lenovo Yoga Pro 7, finally allowing the Ryzen AI9 365 to stretch its legs. While the lower wattage S16 system still put up some amazing performance per watt numbers, even with RDNA 3.5, it couldn't compete directly with the previous generations since those processors were being given a bit more juice. But here we can really see the benefits of what AMD's refreshed gaming architecture can do when it's compared against laptops that have an almost identical power envelope. Moving on to actual games and the differences are even bigger in some cases, to the point where the Pro 7's AI9 365 is sometimes able to offer almost 50% yes, 50% better performance than the 8845HS when both processors are operating at the same nominal power. And that should be a huge dose of good news for anyone who wants to use their thin and light laptop for a bit of gaming. And it's not like you'll be limited to low settings with some of today's most popular titles. A lot of them can be set to medium or even high details and still deliver a playable experience. And even more demanding games are completely playable at medium to, I guess, medium low settings. It just feels like gaming on integrated graphics just keeps getting better and better. Another thing that highlights the potential behind RDNA 3.5 is how close the ZenBook comes to the higher powered 
previous generation devices. I mean, that thing's running at just 33 watts, but it can pretty much match the Zen 4 designs that are running at almost 60 watts. But again, give it a little bit more of that juice and it can just run away with things. And I know what everybody is wondering right now, where in the world is battery life testing? Usually that's at the very beginning of any of our thin and light laptop reviews. And well, we need to talk about it, but maybe in a little bit of a less important way. Because when all of these laptops are operating at their maximum power levels, well, that doesn't really factor all that much into differences in battery testing, at least not in most situations. That's because all these processors are programmed to detect lower loads like browsing or video playback and place themselves into their most efficient power state when on battery. So basically the ZenBook and Yoga Pro 7 get about the same time here with only the real differences likely due to ZenBook's slightly larger battery capacity. What this shows though is a clear dominance of Zen 5 over past AMD Ryzen laptop processors when it comes to on battery efficiency. I mean, we've got three identical Yoga Pro 7s here and the Ryzen AI 9 365 is clearly head and shoulders better than its predecessors. And we also have to remember this new Yoga Pro 7 is sporting a slightly more power hungry OLED display versus the IPS panel on the Gen 8 devices, even when we normalize refresh rate and brightness output. I mean, it's an absolutely stunning panel, so it's a sacrifice I'm more than willing to make, but it's something that you might need to take into account. There is one exception though, and that's under heavy load since the Pro 7 sacrifices battery life for higher performance, while the ZenBook sticks to a much lower power envelope, so it gets a longer time away from the mains. So does this change our opinion about Zen 5 on the laptop side at least? And the answer to that is yes and no. On one hand, I personally think that Zen 5 is one of the best CPU architectures to hit the laptop market in the last like 10 years. On the other hand, what these tests show is that it can also scale very, very well from lower wattages all the way up to higher ones without losing its competitive edge. And that's especially important when you consider laptops like the Yoga Pro 7 have an internal power setting that can run it anywhere from 30 watts all the way to the 58 watt power plan we used here. So one laptop like this can cover every situation from an ultra efficient battery sipper to high performance computing with the press of a button. So what AMD did here with this new architecture is pretty noteworthy. They've put Zen 5's power budget into more cores, a much better GPU, GPU and a bunch of other architectural updates. And the end result is very, very impressive at every single wattage level. But how will this all shake out in the next couple of months when the competition is due to heat up it like in a massive, massive way? Well, we're just gonna have to see, but all I have to say is that more competition is a really good thing. It drives down prices, offers consumers more choice. And personally, I'm so excited about what we're about to see specifically in this thin and light laptop market. Anyways, I'm Mike with Haro Canucks. I hope that you enjoyed this, it, to me at least, very interesting apples to apples comparison between identical devices on the laptop side, and I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day, guys.